Welcome back to The Furnished Mind. And remember, Christ is king. So back to the Apple River stabbing incident. So Nicolet Mew, his verdict is now being read in court. Let's take a listen. All right, we are back in session on the record in state of Wisconsin versus Nikolai Mew. Uh, the attorneys are present with Mr. Mew. Twelve jurors are in the courtroom. Mr. Ashland, I understand you are the foreperson. Correct. Did your jury reach a verdict? Yeah. Did you reach a verdict on each of the six counts? Yes, we did. Okay, please hand the verdict forms to the bailiff. The verdicts read as follows. As to count one of the information, Isaac Schumann, the jury finds Nikolai Mew guilty of first degree reckless homicide as submitted. Wow. Question, did Mr. Mew commit the crime while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. As to count two of the information, Alexander Martin, the jury finds Nikolai Mew guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as submitted. Did Mr. Mew commit the crime while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. His facial expressions, wow. As to count three of the information, Dante Carlson, the jury finds Nikolai Mew guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as submitted. Did Mr. Mew commit the crime while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. As to count four of the information, Anthony Carlson, oh, wow, the jury finds family. Nikolai Mew guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as submitted. Did Mr. Mew commit the crime while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. Wow. As to count five of the information, Riley Madison, the jury finds Nikolai Mew guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as wow. submitted. Did Mr. Mew commit the crime while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. As to count six of the information, Madison Cohen, the jury finds Nikolai Mew guilty of battery as charged. Did Mr. Mew commit the crime while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. Uh, members of the jury, uh, I do have to verify that this is in fact a unanimous verdict. Uh, so I'm going to ask each of you if I correctly read the verdict uh, and if you agree with it. Uh, so when I call your name. The camera pans to his family because they are devastated. They are, oh man, that's sad to see. And, and just when they first read that first verdict, just to watch, you can tell he was praying hard. Oh man, that's tough. But let's continue here. <laughs> uh, if you agree with the verdict that I read, please answer by saying yes. If you disagree with the verdict, you can answer by saying no. Uh, Ms. Navarro, uh, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Uh, Mr. Cook, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Uh, Mr. Snell, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Ms. Pelzel, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Uh, Mr. Wiley, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Uh, Ms. Knapp, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Mr. Diedrich, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Ms. McMahon, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Mr. Henderlong, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Mr. Ashland, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Ms. McMullen, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Ms. Lewandowski, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Uh, any additional polling? No? All right. It is a unanimous verdict. Members did he act in self-defense? I was of the opinion that he did based on the cell phone footage that was released. Now, was it an overreach to pull out a knife and stab at teens? Yes. But according to him, he was swarmed by about a dozen or plus teenagers, young adults. And to him, he was acting in fear. Now, if we get down and read, based on the description that was given, or at least that I was able to find while researching, they made the claim that they did not believe he was fearful of his life. And the reason why is because when he left, um, he didn't alert anyone. He went back to his group. Um, he didn't tell them anything, and he was looking to leave. Um, they didn't believe that he was acting in fear. They believed he was acting in anger. So homicide posits the idea that there is intent behind the act. And he was claiming self-defense. So reckless homicide is a crime in which the perpetrator was aware that their act creates significant risk of death or grievous bodily harm in the victim, but ignores the risk and continues to act, and the human death results. 
Now, in contrast, negligent homicide is in which the perpetrator did not have the awareness of the risk, but should have had it. So they're claiming that it was reckless homicide, that he, he ignored his risk, or he ignored the risk of death resulting and continued to act, which is what we saw in that video. He stabbed the first kid, um, he stabbed the second kid, he stabbed a total of five. One of them resulted in the unfortunate death of a teenager from Stillwater, Minnesota. Nicolay Mew has been found guilty. He's going to face upwards of 60 years in prison. Um, obviously, they have not set the date on the terms of sentencing, but we can see that they'll probably announce that soon. Um, but long story short, we saw his family crying. Other than behind a glass wall, this will be the last time they'll see him as a free man. Nicolay Mew will finish the remainder of his life behind bars. Um, it's a very interesting case to see. Um, it allows you to see where do we draw the line in the, in the sand in regards to reckless homicide versus just mere self-defense. Um, a lot of people, including myself, I thought um, it was self-defense, but a lot of people, including myself, also thought that his means of self-defense were a little excessive. How far can self-defense go? Should he have stopped and just assumed that he was safe, that they were going to stop charging at him, they are going to stop assaulting him? I think this raises a lot of very interesting questions, but you guys let me know your thoughts. Um, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Deuces.